Welcome to a new episode of Science in Context. I'm Sabine, and this week, Dr. Jennifer Shelton joins me to speak about citizen science in Aspergillus fumigatus. Jenny, let's start with Aspergillus fumigatus. What exactly is this? Aspergillus fumigatus is a fungus that plays an important role in the environment, breaking down dead plant matter so that the nutrients can be recycled into the soil. But it's also an opportunistic human lung pathogen we are inhaling these spores all of the time, but they can cause an illness called aspergillosis if we have a severe allergic reaction to them or if our innate immune response is unable to stop the spores from reaching our lung cavities where they can establish and grow. And in your research, you used a citizen science approach. What does that look like? So this research was part of my PhD. It was initially going to be me driving around the UK collecting air and soil samples by myself, but we realised that a method previously used by a member of the Fisher Lab, Dr Daniel Henk, could also be used for collecting aspergillus spores. And so we recruited citizen scientists through Twitter and we sent out air samplers to them, which were just sticky seals that they exposed for a day and then covered them back up at the end of the day, posted them back to us and then I cultured from them Aspergillus fumigatus spores. So I'd just like to say a huge thank you for all the citizen scientists who took part because it would not have been possible without you. Through this method, you collected over 1,900 air samples from across the UK. And what were your main findings? So half of those 1,900 air samples grew a total of 2,366 Aspergillus fumigatus spores. I then tested those isolates for susceptibility to a drug called tebigonazole, which is an azole drug we use here in the UK in agriculture, and it confers resistance to the medical azoles that we use to treat aspergillosis. And the main finding of the study was that 4.7% of those 2,366 spores were resistant to tebiconazole and therefore resistant to at least one other medical azole. That is one in 20 of the spores that we inhale on a daily basis. 